see that? Tell me you saw that. Sounds like thunder. You're late. <laughs> We're starting to think you'd stumbled off a cliff. I seem to recall that was you, Gav. Good to see you. Any trouble on the road? Nothing we couldn't handle. I knew you'd come. Is that who I think it is? Yes. Uh, allow me to introduce my brother, Joshua. Clive's told me all about you. I were even listening most of the time. Name's Middadol, but everyone calls me Mid. My lady. Hey. Byron. <laughs> it's really you. I never thought I'd see the day. <laughs> so these Akashic are being controlled. That's what it looked like. Empty eyes, eerie blue glow. No doubt they were turned, but silent as monks, every last one of them. Your man here speaks true, Clive. We saw more than a few in the city. They moved in ranks with a purpose, and not of their own. Ultima's doing. Perhaps. What of the city? The people? Uh, dead, mostly. Mostly, but not all. A handful managed to lock themselves in their villas before the Horde arrived. Some in the Merchant's District to the west, and a few of us on the far bank. Hmm. If the Akashic stumble across either hiding place, a few bolted doors won't hold them for long. We need to find them. And quickly. What do you propose? We split into two parties. I will make for the merchant's district, while you look to those across the river. Mind keeping an eye on my brother? Not at all. We find the villa and try the servant's entrance. Understood. And what of us? Mid, is she fit to sail? The ship? Uh, the mithril engine could probably do with a few more tweaks. Then you better work fast. Even if we do reach the survivors in time, they'll never make it to the hideaway on foot. You leave that to me. See that Mid doesn't get herself into trouble, would you? Think I can manage that? I'll keep him safe. Looks like you stuck with me, Byron. That's Lord Rossfield, you little gutter snipe.
Shall we then? And you keep Clive safe. Be careful. Both of you. You too. chance against those things.
There may still be survivors inside. You've caused quite the commotion. But then I would expect no less from you, Muthos. You again. I don't believe we've been introduced. You were in my family's crypt. And now you're here. With an army of Akashic thralls. Manners, Lord Rossfield. They are men, like you and me. Albeit one's uh, unburdened by the wills that drive our kind to madness. They are pure. They are... divine. What? And they are all that remains in this once raucous city. You'll pay for what you've done. As you wish. I confess, I have been very much looking forward to this. Pardon me, this indulgence, your majesty. The vessel shall not be spoiled. I am the Maiden of House Harbor. And you will yield! Or not. As long as you know. Forgive me if my performance seems uninspired. It is just that I expected so much more from our chosen one. Uh, perhaps this will kindle your flame? What now? A gift from my liege lord's armory. Gungnir. Watch closely, Mythos.
Actually, I wouldn't. Vessel is strong. My leash. Clive. You're all right. As are you, I see. We are, yes. I'm sorry, but we couldn't save them. It was over before we arrived. Well, you did what you could. I fear we were all too late. What's wrong? Nothing. I hope. <sighs> Leaving so soon, Mythos? It's the king. Indeed, you may kneel before Barnabas Tharm, Warden of Ash and King of Walud. Get back.
more of the boy who bested my lord commander. Yet I see why my master covets you so. The power within you, Mythos. The potential. <laughs> Stop calling me Muthos. But Muthos is everything. The cornerstone of all creation. The Lord's vessel. Your purpose. My purpose? To surrender my mind and body to that thing. No, your majesty. My purpose is my own. I made a promise to my friends, to my people. And nothing is going to stand in my way. You would allow this delusion of free will to bar your path to greatness? Truly, your volition is a cancer. One that must be excised. Will he be all right? The Phoenix can mend flesh, but the spirit must recover on its own. I'm afraid the rest is up to him. This place is remarkable. Outfitting it must have been no small feat. But why go to such trouble? That beauty's belly is filled with wonders the world ain't ready for. If the guilds caught wind of what we're up to, they'd all want a piece. All right. And how is he? Do not blame yourself. He was barely breathing when you brought him here. We would have lost him if it were not for you. No. Barnabas may have severed nigh every sinew in my brother's body. But he made certain the wounds were not fatal. Nigh every sinew? <laughs> Allow me, your lordship. Don't know what I was thinking, putting you to the trouble like that. <laughs> it is no trouble carrying comestibles to my ailing nephew. I know, but... You've already done so much for us. Pouring your gill into the hideway and now the ship. 
I don't want to take the piss. You risked your life. And for what? Some girl you hardly know. Why'd you do it? You got mad or something? I... wouldn't go that far. Clive! You're awake, my boy. Oh. <laughs> what I want to do is help. And the world won't save itself. It was Sid. Your father, who taught me that. Sounds like him. Don't you dare do that again. What of the Royalists? Fucked off, the lot of them. Along with the Galleon. With the King on board, no doubt. The Iron Hay, I wouldn't say without him. <sighs> Clive. Jill didn't come back. What do you mean? She kept the king busy while the others dragged you out. It's all right, Mid. Jill is fine. The ether of her icon endures. And as long as it does, we can be certain she is alive. <laughs> We must pursue the Black Galleon. Jill will be with the King, I'm sure of it. Well, good luck catching him, because my ship's going nowhere. It's the Mithril engine. She's got a kick like a wild chocobo and a mind to tear the hull in half. But do you have an idea? <sighs> well, of course I do. My dad will have seen this coming a league off. If I had his old writings, if you had his old writings, you'd be sitting under a fuckload of rubble. The ones Otto didn't save anyway. I suppose he might still have a few pages in his stores. We'll have to hope it's enough. Do what you can to ready the ship. I'll speak with Otto. In your condition, you really are mad. <laughs> Perhaps. But the world really won't save itself. said that Otto might know something. Let me tell you a story, Clive. All right. Them rumours wet legs were spreading. Might be they weren't just tales plucked out of thin air. You see, there were a time when I weren't too particular about who I sold steel to, so long as they paid me the right price. Some women lust after blood, others after flesh, but me? I were always one for gold. And to satisfy that lust, I sold to opposing armies, stabbed my every client in the back, made myself the most hated woman in the twins. But then one day... One day I met a man who made me a different kind of offer. Said he'd give me access to a realm-wide community of like-minded individuals in constant need of steel and sundries. On the condition, I sold to him and his alone. Was that the first time you met Sid? Aye. And I fell right into his damn trap. He were true to his word, so I ended up being true to mine. And I soon started making the best profits I've seen since taking up the trade. And all without aiding or abetting any outlaws. Except Sid himself, that is. Told me about his plan to topple the Mother Crystals, you know. Said that with them gone, the realm would want for all manner of things. An opportunity for the likes of me to mint gill. 
Why, I reckon an enterprising individual could find himself the richest dam in the twins. And that's when he had me. I emptied my stores that day and moved into the Ardaway proper. And the rest, as they say, is ancient bloody history. A dozen years on, and I'm still not the richest dam. <laughs> not for lack of trying, mind. But I can say, that I have never been happier. You've all shown me there are some things more precious than Gil. That there are. So don't you go messing it all up. Or you'll have me to answer to. Still alive, are you? Go on, then. Come again. Oh, don't. I'm not much bothered either way. So what do I owe the honor? What do you want? No scratches, right? Not bad, if I do say so myself. Should last you a good while. Anything else? Clive. Go on then. Again. Oh, don't. I'm not much but still alive, are you? <laughs> the old, as the old saying goes. That great lump. No. Come back soon. And I mean that. If it's knowledge you see. Cole said it was an army of a cash. How are we supposed to do our duty?
this might take a while. Straight home now. It's a dangerous world out there. Finished, are you? Clive. Go on, then. Rubbing me blind, you know. Cole said it was an army of a cash. How are we supposed to do our duty when the hill Clive? 
But if you're here, where the hell is everyone else? Don't tell me. They're all right. But it's a long story. You lot don't do things by halves, do you? Well, at least everyone's still breathing. Now, as for these writings, I'm sorry to say, Clive, but if you had those, you'd be... Sitting under a pile of rubble, I know. But we were able to save a few bits and pieces from the ruins, most of which ended up being used to build this place. The more personal items we gave to the next of kin. In the case of Sid's things, that would have been mid. Then I'll check the workshop. Ah, oh, I wasn't expecting you back so soon. Your benefactors are a generous lot. You earned this. Here you are. Come again. I may have more. Tells me Mid won't be needing these. We've had no word from Canva for days. Please tell me Mid is all right. This looks like it's from Sid's old diary. Uh, but you'll already have read it. I'd better keep looking. I remember seeing this doll in Sid's cellar. I wonder if it was Mid's. this tucked inside it. Sid's best invention. Hmm. That sounds promising. So Sid hid something in Mid's first opus. What would that be? Perhaps Otto might know. first opus was. Opus? That girl's as tone deaf as a banshee. Unless you mean the orchestrion. She couldn't have been more than, what, 11, 12, when she cobbled that thing together? It surprised us all. Not least her dad. You should have seen how proud he was of the little scamp. What's that battered old box have to do with anything? I think Sid may have hidden something inside it. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. 
Those two and their bloody treasure hunts. Half the things in the hideaway we hidden one time or another. What didn't you break? Nothing. We didn't break nothing. We definitely didn't break the orchestra. <sighs> What's wrong with it? It's broken. Except when it isn't. See? And you had nothing to do with this? Nope. Nothing. We just wanted to listen to all the songs at once. So we press all the buttons. Like this. See? <sighs> all too well. All right, out of the way. started playing when I removed this. Whatever it is. Well, don't look at me. I can tell you it's important, though. Sid showed it to me once and said as much. Said it was the stuff dreams were made of. <sighs> Let's just hope it's the stuff ships are made of as well. Indeed. Let's see if we can make some dreams come true. Just the two I was looking for. Aye, aye. Who's a patient? Actually, yes. The Crown Prince just left. Dion left? Unless you've another word for stood up and walked off. Yes, left. He did have the decency to leave a message with Obelisk before commandeering one of his dinghies. Should we go after him? No. We're not the Prince's keepers. He's free to do as he sees fit. I'd rather he did so in bed. His wounds are nowhere near healed. Much like yours, I suspect. Otto told me what happened in Canver. What is it with this realm's princes and their aversion to rest? Uh, ask me when I get back. Though I may be some time. Then at least try to stay safe. And if that fails, try to stay alive, eh? 